So welcome to this presentation. I will present the Swiss Geol project. Um, I will present it as a software development point of view, as it's a sof software conference. It's cool to see many known faces in the room. So hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, just a few words about Camp to Camp. We are an open source service provider founded in 2001, so 20 years experience of open source. And uh, we contribute and integrate and develop custom software for customers. 150 employees with a focus on building application and running this application. And um, I think we are one of the largest European service providers that really contribute to the geospatial open source software. So what about Swiss Geol? In, in uh, Switzerland, we have many geological data but we didn't have a, a, a good portal to showcase them. So the vision of the project is to build the portal of the National Geological Model. It's a project supported by Swiss Topo that we did for Swiss Topo. Um, the goal of the project should be the marketplace for nationwide harmonized geological data with free access and that allows visualization, search and download and it should be a platform. This means you have the official data, let's say, and the geologists in Switzerland can also upload their data and analyze them, mix and match, with other, other data. And it's open source. It has been developed in GitHub under the Swiss Geol project. So I encourage you to go on swissgeol.ch and also as well to have a look at the platform uh, on GitHub. So the project started a couple of years ago. And what was the initial, initial situation? We had a lot of analog data. That's what that this picture is from the kickoff. So we had a look at what exists at the time. So the paper maps, a lot of manual editing, difficult accessibility. It's in the library. Uh, sometimes low data quality, difficult to get to the data. Uh, and really, there was a need for a portal. And so in Switzerland, we have, for example, uh, uh, 3D models, a lot of pilot areas, 6,000 boreholes, 12,000 kilometers of seismic lines, and more than 45,000 reports. And the goal of this project is to make this data available for everyone. And from the technology, technological situation, at the beginning, Swiss Topo has a geoportal, a 3D geoportal that, you, that is built on top of Swissium. And as a service provider, we don't want to introduce another technology at Swiss Topo if it's possible to use Cesium as well for underground data. But the problem at the beginning was actually cesium at the time was not able to bring the camera below the surface. So it was not possible to represent geological data. So kind of tough situation, a lot of analog data. Technology is there, but not completely suitable. And so how, we, how you, would you meet this challenge? So we then identified it as a, as a digital transformation project with a lot of innovative components. We have to, to develop inside Cesium the, the visualization and navigation below surface. So we established a, a R&D partnership with Cesium Geospatial, the editor of Cesium. And then navigation underground was not easy. It's not done yet. And so we also um, uh, worked with UI and UX experts to define the right workflow to, to for the users to navigate and interact with this data. As it's a greenfield project, you don't know at the beginning how fast you will be able to develop things in this context. We thought that agile, method agile software development methods would be best, and so we started with Scrum because it allows to update the scope, update the specification according to the know-how you gain along the project. And for sure, in, 20, in these years, you should start a cloud-native project. So we, we use heavily continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline, and a lot of AWS services. Does, did it work? Does it work? I guess yes. Here you have a few screenshots of uh, what we implemented. So we were able to bring the camera below, below the terrain and show buildings, cellar, uh, boreholes, earthquake, interact with the data. You can query them and get all the, info, the detailed information. Uh, it's also possible to display tunnels, underground water bodies, things like this. 
And as well, you can also display rocks on ge ge geological stratification on top of the digital elevation model. All this is available in SwissGeol.ch huh? if you would like to, have a, to test it. And then advanced features also have been developed, like for example, this ability to cut the model to see it from the side and have detailed information. So, and then once the model is cut, you can also download it to use it in a dedicated geological software. We are currently working on the voxel, the integration of this uh, new uh, data format, and uh, the first prototypes, work in progress, are already published. And so this is a screenshot from the, 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 work current, the current work by Cesium. So let's have a look at a few implementation details. Uh, how did we do this? So first, I said we contribute to open source software. I think that's the right way to, to do when you use open source software. And uh, here you have one of the major or important pull request. It's the first one where Cesium was able to bring camera underground controls on navigation below terrain. Uh, you see, and um, actually, if you can look in the GitHub, it's quite a long, the community was, it was involved. It's a, a very uh, open development. And currently, we have the Voxel implementation that is as a draft, not yet merged, but it's the draft, so it's, it's developed in an open fashion, open, open way. So here's some op uh, open source contributions for this project that allows everyone in the geological area outside Switzerland, everyone can then benefit from these new possibilities. Then about the inter inter interaction uh, for, the, for the end user, how do to work with the, the solution? So we had a few UI UX experts and they did very precise uh, user interaction mockups uh, and uh, scenarios with uh, uh, um, personas and people that were involved at the beginning, very early uh, testing. And in the end, a lot of very specific mockups to be implemented in the project so that we build a, a great end, end user facing application. And so here, for example, an example of the, the UI UX and how we, we, we show the user how to navigate underground, how deep you are in below the terrain. So quite a lot of uh, information to be communicated to the user so that he can orient himself below terrain. A few words about agile project management. So at Camp to Camp, when we speak about agile, we mostly speak about Scrum. And so we bring a technical product owner in the game that will uh, be the, the, the proxy to the customer and will help the customer manage the agile team of uh, three or four developers with a backlog, test pages, two week sprints, uh, and we respect uh, very carefully the Scrum uh, way of working because bringing structure and using this structure in the agile way gives the liberty and makes the project flow. It's agile, it's not chaos. Agile is very structured, and when you do it like this, uh, you can foresee where you will land, and it's, it gives uh, a lot of security to the project management team. So it, it brings high transparency, fast rollouts, if you have the right continuous integration. It allows constant feedback and improvement, so alpha testing on things like this can be integrated. Fast reaction to change, and in the end, we, are really, we are really, really believe it's the best fit for the result uh, we can achieve with, uh, with the Agile method. Here, an example of the, uh, our Jira board. Uh, we can see, for example, the first issue on the Voxel, it's 91. And just below, we are 800 issues that has been very specified in detail. So quite a heavy, uh, heavy specification work, but that's, that's, that, that needs to be done if you want your Scrum team to be able to, be able to develop and to flow and, and to perform and bring and to have the velocity uh, that, uh, that is expected. What about cloud native? Uh, I like this quote from uh, Chris Holmes uh, um, because we often think cloud native is it's about uh, running software in the cloud. But uh, if you look at this, actually, it's more actually best practices and tools for building a complete developer workflow that only run in the cloud. It's not just about having the application in the cloud, it's the whole system, all the development system that runs in the cloud. And so, 
uh, it starts with a software factory of, of uh, one of the tools these days it's GitHub uh, and so we use it heavily with pull requests, actions, security checks and so on. So you can have, have, here, have here a look. So it's, it's public, you, as you can see, more than 3,000 commits, uh, many branches, and if you go here in the, uh, in the, uh, in the um, uh, you will also find a lot of all the tags when we, at, at the end of each sprint, when we deliver uh, the software to be put it into integration. Um, here an example of the workflow continuous integration. So we have, uh, 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 in this case, more than 3,000 uh, GitHub Action continuous integration workflow that run. It, we use it both uh, to fetch data and to populate the system with new data, as well as to make sure we have the quality in the software that we deliver. So it, we use it for both purposes, uh, like for example, earthquake fetcher and continuous integration for or the Rust for the, some, uh, some part of the, the, the project. And uh, here an example, uh, add review links. So in this case, we have a script. When someone writes a pull request, uh, there is a, this action uh, will generate uh, a, links, a, a link, an environment where, it's a, where the product owner and the other users are able to test the solution. So it automatically creates an environment, not in the production area, but a dedicated environment when you can test this specific feature. And so if you have a look, when, for example, Balthazar proposed this uh, pull request, uh, GitHub Action adds links to demo, ref references uh, to storybook and the, the specification uh, tickets in Jira. And so the, for the product owner that tests the solution, you have all the details, all the information at the right place to to validate before it is merged and integrated then uh, in the core software. So we used a few environments, of course the dev with the last, latest version of the code from GitHub, integration, at the end of each two week sprint we put it for on integration for validation and the production environment that, are used, that is used by the, fi the final user. It can look like this, we have here the browser we use, in some cases, in so, for some data sets, Cesium Ion as an online services. We use GeoAdmin API for some querying, looking at the right place, actually searching for places in Switzerland. We integrate with uh, uh, the, the Swiss Federal uh, Authentication Mechanism and uh, also with the GitLab of SwissTopo for the infrastructure as code aspects. Uh, for authentication, it will be also a platform, so we authenticate users, we use uh, Cognito and it, it, uh, uh, it will protect the access to some tiles. Then the, br the browser, it's behind CloudFront, so on AWS, and you will get data from S3 buckets. Um, and then also uh, a few data, for example, yeah, come from the database. And all this comes from GitHub and the automated deploys to, uh, to uh, the AWS system. We also use a tool uh, which is called Sentry and it's a JavaScript library you can link in your project and it will uh, detect errors when the user runs the system. It will detect the errors and report them to you in a central place. So if the user agrees to use, uh, to use Sentry and to report the error, you will get detailed uh, information about what went wrong in which browser, in which use case. So of course you can do some tests, but with this solution, actually, when you are in alpha testing, beta testing, or early stage, actually, your users are also testing without uh, spending time, but just trying the application They gives you information when there is an issue. And so you can uh, classify this, analyze it, how many cases it happens, and so on, prioritize the, these bug, bug reports, and then uh, correct them accordingly. So I think it's a very interesting aspect to be able to distribute the test um, and inside different environment because it's very long to test on each Windows version with each browser version each and so on. So this, this covers this use case. Yeah. Um, regarding the, the application hosting, it's mostly a static application with a few Rust services. Um, so 
actually the, the core of the application is JavaScript code. Uh, we didn't use a, a, a framework like Vue, Angular, and so on, because we wanted to have a, kind of a clean JavaScript approach so we don't have to manage many dependencies and the project is able to survive the years uh, without having major upgrade of a JavaScript framework we would have used. So most of the data, then actually the, this JavaScript code can be hosted on Amazon S3 as a static page. And uh, in the end, it's very cheap and re reliable. So we have 100% uptime so far and uh, really no issue. I recommend this, uh, this type of architecture when, when it's possible. So in the end, uh, what's the feedback after this two years project development time frame? Uh, we have uh, 12 people that contributed to the development of the Swiss Geol project, more than 3,000 commits, more than 600 mandates of software development, uh, more than 50 releases at the end of each sprint, a sprint a zero rollback. I think uh, it's good. It, it, it shows that with the test, with the, this way of working, uh, you can achieve high quality software, 100% uptime. And I think it's a, I would recommend this way of working in the cloud with using all the tools and the agile way. I think it's a proven solution for a successful implementation. In the end, SwissTopo won the Geospatial World Excellence Award in Content Platform this year in the Netherlands. So I think uh, it's also re recognized by the community. So thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for questions.